In this video, we'll create a battery module in React Native using Swift for iOS. So if you're new to native modules in iOS, you can check out the video with the link in the top right corner that'll take you through the basics of building out a native module for iOS in React Native. Once you're familiar with that, you can continue with this video in which we'll create a more useful module, which is going to be our battery module. We're going to learn how we can detect when the user puts their phone into low power mode. So assuming we don't have a React Native module that can detect this, let's see how we can go ahead and set that module up for ourselves. So we've already got a bridging header set up, which imports in the RCT event emitter, which we're going to be needing to detect when the user puts the low power mode on. So just like we had created a Swift file and an Objective-C file for our counter module, let's go ahead and create two new files for our battery module. So in our native modules folder, I'm going to right click it, new file. Let's select a Swift file and I'm just going to call that battery. Make sure native module iOS is selected here and let's click create. So our Swift file is where we're going to define our battery module, but we need to export its methods to the React Native side. And for that, we'll create an Objective-C file. So here I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be an Objective-C file. And again, we're going to call it battery. It's going to be an empty file. And let's click next and click create. So as of now, all it imports in is the foundation class. As in when we set up our battery module, we'll import in the right files. So back into our battery Swift class, let's first create our class and I'm going to call that the battery class. So I'm going to say class battery. And we want the super class to be the RCT event emitter class. We also need to mark this as objective C and we're going to call that battery. The first thing we'll do is we'll enable battery monitoring. So we'll do that in the init method. So we'll just override the init method, call the super dot init, and then we can say UI device dot current to get the current device. And then we have this property called is battery monitoring enabled. And we can set that to true. Next, we need to actually go ahead and observe the change of battery state. For that, I'm going to set up a variable. So I'm going to say private var, call that has listeners and set that to false to start with. Then we'll set up our two methods to start observing and stop observing the battery mode. The first one is start observing. Here we set up our listeners. So we'll say has listeners and set that to true. And then we'll set up the listener. Similarly, we have the stop observing method where we'll set has listeners to false and we'll remove the listener. In order to start observing the battery mode, we have to use the notification center. We'll access the default notification center and we'll add the observer. We'll use the second option here for the selector. So for the observer, we'll set up self and for the selector, we'll actually set up a method that returns the low power mode to the react native side. For the notification name, we'll use the NS process info power state did change. And for the object, we'll pass back nil. So now let's go ahead and set up our selector. So we'll say function and we'll call it power mode did change. The first thing we'll check is if the listeners are not set up, then don't do anything and just return out. Otherwise, let's access the low power mode. So we'll say let low power enabled. is equal to we'll access process info. Then within process info, we'll check for is low power mode enabled. Once we have access to the low power mode, we can then send it back as an event by using self dot send event. The name we're going to pass back is going to be is low power mode enabled. And the body is going to be the value, which is low power enabled. So now here in our selector, We'll use the selector syntax with the hashtag. So we'll say selector. And within this, we'll pass in our method, which is power mode did change. We see we get an error here. It tells us that argument of selector refers to instance method power mode did change that is not exposed to objective C. So let's go ahead and just expose this. And the error goes away. Now, just like we started observing, let's stop observing as well. So we set the listener to false. And then we'll say notification center dot default dot remove observer. Again, within this, the observer is going to be self. And for the name, we're again going to pass back the NS process info power state to change. And for the object, we'll pass in nil. So we set up our battery class. 
which extends the RCT event emitter, we start it by setting has listeners to false. When the class first loads up, we allow it to monitor the battery state with this line here. Then we start observing by setting the listeners to true. We use the notification center to call this power mode did change method every time the low power mode changes. In our stop observing method, we stop observing the low power mode state change. And in our power mode did change method, we pass that low power enabled state back to React Native using self.send event. But every time we're sending events, we have to pass back the supported events method. So here we'll say override, pass in function supported events, and we return back is low power mode enabled. And we'll also set up the requires main queue setup and return false here and save that out. So now we've set up our Swift module. We actually need to expose it back to React Native in our Objective-C file. Here I noticed that I've named this incorrectly, so I'm just gonna correct that. Within our battery.m file, I'm gonna go ahead and import in our React forward slash RCT bridge module, which will give us access to the macros we need. And I'm also gonna import in our RCT event emitter. Then we can set up our interface. Within this, let's say RCT extern module to export our module. We call it battery and the parent class is the RCT event emitter class. But we'll get an error if we don't export a method from our Objective-C file. So what we'll do is in our battery module, along with our listeners that we're adding, we'll also add another method that returns the current low power state. So here we'll say or at Objective-C, I'm gonna create a function called is low power mode enabled Since we want to return the data back asynchronously, we'll just set up a resolve. When we'll say RCT promise resolve block, we'll also pass in a reject with the RCT promise reject block. But here we'll just pass back resolve, and within that, we'll use process info dot process info dot is low power mode enabled, and save that out. Now back in our battery object we see class, we can just say RCT extern method, and pass in is low power mode enabled. Pass in our RCT promise resolve block with resolve. And for reject, we'll just pass in RCT promise reject block with reject. Let's just build out our app. Once it succeeds, let's head back to Visual Studio Code. Within this, we were already accessing our counter module. Along with this, I'm gonna set up a new button, which will return the low power mode of the device. So I'm just gonna duplicate this Call that is low power mode enabled. Here we'll say is low power mode enabled again. Let's set up this method. Is low power mode enabled is equal to. It's going to be an asynchronous method. Here we'll just say var low power mode is equal to. We'll await native modules dot battery and then access the is low power mode enabled method. We'll then just check if low power mode is true, then we'll just use an alert to say low power mode is enabled. Otherwise we'll just say low power mode is not enabled. I'm just gonna actually test this out on my real device. So head back to Xcode. Here I'm actually gonna select my device, which is my phone, run it on my phone. So we see it loads up. If we click on is low power mode enabled, we see it is enabled because I already have it enabled on my phone. I'm just gonna disable it. And tap that again. And it tells us low power mode is not enabled. Now we also want to detect when this happens automatically. So coming up here to the top, just like we had set up our counter events, I'm gonna duplicate that. And instead call that battery events and it's gonna access the battery from the native modules. Then within our use effect, let's go ahead and set up our listener. So I'm gonna have battery events dot add listener. The listener we're looking for is power mode did change. The result, here again, we'll say if it's true. Then we wanna print out the alert that low power mode is enabled. Otherwise we'll print out the alert that low power mode is not enabled. Then in our return method, we'll just say battery events 
dot remove listeners. Let's just save that out. Let's just redone it. And actually we had called the listener is low power mode enabled. So I'm going to change that is low power mode enabled. Save that and just read on our app again. Let's try and change our low power mode. As we see, we get an alert that low power mode is enabled. Let's try and disable it. And we see low power mode is not enabled. So in this video, we were able to create a more useful native module in iOS. In the next video, I'm going to create the same module in Android using Kotlin.